What's up, everyone? Matt back for another Who Are They? Real Review. And today I'm here to talk to you about none other than one of the most anticipated films of the year, if not of the last three or four years. And that is Top Gun Maverick. Um, so I'll, I'll be frank. If you've seen me on the internet the last month or so, I've been honest about my feelings about the original Top Gun. It took me seven attempts of trying to get it finished starting starting it from the beginning seven times over because i hate doing the first time viewing in, in sex seven attempts because i was bored i didn't think it was that good. i and ultimately the original top gun i is a movie i think that soundtrack is better than the actual film so what i tried to do when it comes to this film is I tried to go on with an open mind because I think that's the best way to approach a, f a film, especially when you don't like its predecessor and it's, a, it's in a series. So I went into Top Gun Maverick with a completely open mind thinking that, okay, Top Gun itself, the original 86 film is an okay film. It's an okay film. Not, nothing great, nothing to write home about. Just has a great soundtrack and, and it's very lacking in story and whatnot but this film however this film outdoes the first film it it rewards you for the first film and ultimately does what is hard for sequels to do which is make the first film even better so i really dug the hell out of this film maverick is such an emotional, well-written, thought-out, methodical film that earns its moments of fan service. It doesn't just be like, here's fan service, let's throw it in your face. I'm looking at you, Endgame. Um, but this film earns it, and I'm not going to lie. There's one moment when I roll my eyes, and that's the opening of the film, and that's just because it's a complete and total recreation of the original opening. I should have known it was coming. I still didn't care for that. That's just me. But Tom Cruise delivers one of his best performances in this film. And you could tell how much care went into this. We're at this point where Maverick is fighting for his life within the U.S. Navy and staying in the air, staying in the skies. And it's kind of a reflection of the first film in the best ways possible while also driving the story in a new and different direction that shows you that Mac, that Maverick is still the guy. And I thought that was really cool. Uh, there are definitely nods to the original score and whether it be in actual songs or timings of other songs and when those other songs play, but the cast in this is just stellar. One of the things I loved is that Miles Teller's Rooster. That's right. Son of Goose, Rooster. Um, he looks like a spitting image of Goose. And it, they, I, the costume designers and whoever decided to go with that design, fantastic job. Just It's like, all right, how could we make Miles Teller look like Goose? Bam. And you're like, wow, there were there are there's the moment he's actually like introduced as a character to us, not in photos, is a moment that just hits you in the feels, especially the way it's cut together. Uh and you're just like, damn, that's that's gotta hurt, Mav. Like it's so powerful and it triggers something, and it's just oh, it's great. Um, other standouts, of course, Miles Teller. Um, then you have Glenn Powell and Monica Barbaro, uh, who, if you don't know her, I know her from the ABC comedy splitting up together. She played Lisa Apple and she does a great job providing some female power and spark to this. I loved that about her. Um, Jennifer Conley is just fantastic. I mean, you can never go wrong with adding her to a film. 
And it's just one of those films that earns every second that it, of its runtime. It, it's it's a two hour eleven minute film. It's about like twenty minutes longer than the original, but you don't really feel it because of how fast paced it's going, and at times how dire the circumstances are. And I think that was really important. Um, Val Kilmer. His, him coming back as ice. Uh, it's not. It's not a spoiler. He's it's in the trailers. It's just, oh my god, it was it's heartbreaking and beautiful. I just, I, I, it like I said, it makes the original better. I, I decided to rewatch the original shortly after it, and it was much more enjoyable knowing what came after. So, if I'm going to give this film a rating, my rating's a 4 out of 5. I want to say, Joseph Kaczynski, Kaczynski, who's done films like Tron Legacy and Oblivion, he did a fantastic job, because this film could have been bad. Um, Sequels like this, especially sequels that are coming out... Technically, 36 years later, I'll give it a pass because it was supposed to come out in 2020. So, 34 years later is a hard t- task. And he does it in such a masterful way that you can't help but love the final product. And I think that's really important, especially for a film like Top Gun Maverick. But that's it on my thoughts. What are your thoughts? I want to hear your thoughts. That's right, your thoughts. Like the video, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Check out everything we're doing over here at Walt Real Entertainment. Uh, Check out our Bob's Burgers review, which is also up now. But until then, we'll see you next time.